Hey, thanks for coming for this demo. Uh, Playtime for Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone. We're gonna have a good time today. Uh, I knew from the first time I saw a video of this game that it really was gonna fit for me. One of the things I love about it is the game rules itself are super easy. So you can focus on the strategy of it. So let's start with talking about one of the key features, the range ruler. So you see how it's red, yellow, and green. Everything in the game ties into the color pattern. So when you're looking at the table, you can see on the cards, red, yellow, and green in the top left. Weapons have color codes, and then the actions across the top have the color codes as well. So the cool thing to think about, though, is the player cards. So in the top corner of the player cards, you can see this one has three actions listed on here. So you have, in this case, three green action tokens. When you go to play the game, you'll see that you have a model down and three tokens with it. That's how you're going to know what your activations are and your actions for that event and what you're going to do. So that's for what are you going to do? I have three actions that I can take when I activate. Further down, you can see the weapon this person has. So in this case, the range of this person's dual pistols, and what's important about him is Street King, who's not in the game with us today, he just walks around like this, ready to blow people up and do this, and it's awesome. But that's me being a cyberpunk geek. So when you look at his weapons here, you see how he has the red, yellow, and the green? That corresponds to the range ruler, red, yellow, and green. So when you're lining up your shot, you can shoot all the way 12 inches up. So red, yellow, and green. Sometimes you'll see weapons. For example, if you look at this character right here, you can see that the first spot is gray. That means that character cannot shoot the red range, but can shoot the yellow and green. Other people, like right below it, you see it's gray, 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 and then it has that plus green. That gun can shoot 12 plus. It can't shoot somebody near, but it can do something great with long range. So that's how you use the colors for what range in your weapons can do. Actions, ranges on the weapons. Then you're gonna say to me, but how far can these people move? What's that work like? And I'm gonna say, well, wouldn't it be cool if colors worked in the same way? And you're gonna say, yes, it would be cool, right? So you pick one of your characters and you say, I wanna use a green action token. Green action token symbolizes the green distance so that character can now move 12 inches. If you activate it with the yellow action token, you can move seven inches. Later in the game, you'll see when you're injured, you're gonna have a red action token. Only move three inches here. So the key with the game, what's great about it, everything you need is all in front of you on the card, range rollers, action tokens. You need to know if you're wounded, your action tokens start turning red. More wounds you get, the more red is it, the red they are. Once you have all three are turned red, or all two for some characters, the next wound takes that character out. So those three greens could turn into three reds. I hit you one more time and all you about is dead. Pretty cool. So it keeps it all in the table for you. So when I was saying before, rule book, oh, guess what? It's a really compact rule book, easy to figure out. And then everything you need for strategy is all right in front of you. So that's a pretty awesome part of it. The other thing that's awesome about this game is the react system. So when you hear that, you're like, so that means I get to react to things. Exactly. So if someone starts punching you and they wound you and you have an action, you get to shoot them back, punch them back or run away. So you get to react to that. So there's really thematic things. You'll have somebody over here who comes running up really hard and punches you in the face, and you get a black eye or whatever in the game, and then all of a sudden you go bam, and that person's down for the count because you're just awesome at reacting. So reacting, if you have that action and you are wounded by the hit, you get to fight back. That's one of the fun features. It keeps the game moving back and forth. So one piece, now you're saying, great, I can react, I can do actions, but how does the game flow? Like, what is it really doing? So here's the key. Obviously, I have my giant player card in front of me. When I'm ready to go, I'm gonna say, I am activating Street King. 
That means I'm using this character for his activation. And then I'm picking what actions I want to use. So I might have Street King just move green because I want him in a better position. And I save his other two actions because I don't have to use them. So I'm going to say moving green with Street King and I move green on the table. Then it is your turn to pick one of your characters. And then you're going to say, I'm going to activate Kodai and I'm going to do something with yellow. And you have a choice. You have two actions. You could do both. You could do one. And then you're going to send it back to me to pick someone. I could pick anyone else I want, or I can use another action from Street King. Because you're picking the character to activate, and then how many actions you want to run with. So again, it keeps the game going back and forth. You're not sitting here waiting, you move all five, I move all five, you move all five. You move one, act, boom, I get to move and act again. And then the cool piece is, is some people have special rules. You hurt my friend, I get to jump in the way and help him. Or you uh, do this, therefore it triggers this rule so my person can help. There's some snipers in this game. I saw, you know, a friend of mine says, I saw what you did to my friend. And then all of a sudden the snipers come and get activated. So it's pretty cool. So lots of different pieces in that. Today's demo, we're using what comes in the starter box. We have over here, the Tiger Claws, which are like uh, Mafia or Yakuza. Lots of swords, lots of katanas. On this side, we have Maelstrom. These are your cyborgs. If they could put something computerized or cyber into their body to make them better, they will. So we have guys with built-in shoulder rocket mounts. We have people with uh, the ability to hack other people in the team. It's just pretty interesting balance because when you play the starter armies, you just have a nice flow where they play off of them, they play off of them, and it's a good first starting pit to play with. Okay. Now, the one thing I want to go into now, and this is really one of the last features of the game, the dice. This is the brain, so I saved it for last. You, when you pick your action, I am going to use a green token. That tells you what die you're going to use to fire your gun. So if I'm Street King and I'm going to shoot my dual pistol at you, I'm using green, so I'm going to roll green to shoot you. You, all, most of your characters have yellow, so we just use them in the example. You're going to roll a yellow because that's the actions you have available. We roll, highest one is the starting point, but then you get into the skills that are on the other side of the card. For example, this skill right here, this is the reflex skill. This is, you tried to shoot me and I'm gonna just do this and move out of the way. I wanna jump from here to here, I use the reflex skill. I need to climb a building, I use the reflex skill. Next one is my shooting skill. What's cool about this is I'm now shooting my pistols at you, so I get plus two to my die roll because of this skill. So just using the numbers I laid down, my 11 would become a 13. So that's pretty cool, right? Now, you happen to have this evade. Your four would get a two and you become a six. Now I would still hit you and you would be like, man, that stinks. You just hit me, right? Say it, man, that stinks. <laughs> so when you're sitting there saying that, now here's the cool part. If you look way over on your end, you see those things? Those are luck tokens. During the game, you'll have a few luck tokens. Those are rerolls. You don't want to be hit right now. You have the luck token, you flip, and you did worse, but you get the chance to do that. So you're in a battle to save the world. At the very end, use that luck token, right? So skills help you with attacking and defending. Die rolls get you there, luck tokens. And the other piece, the reason I save this to end, Six-sided, eight-sided, 12-sided. Every one of these has a, the lowest number and the highest number, obviously. The highest number is a critical. A critical is a critical. If I roll a 12 and you defend and get an eight, you have a critical, I have a critical, it's the same. You win because you're the defender. Tie goes to the defender. But a critical is an automatic win. But then there's also a fumble, which is the opposite. It's getting once. It's an automatic lose. So when you fumble, that's bad. There's a rocket launcher in the game. When you fumble, that rocket drops right to your feet. So you got to be careful.
And then the other piece of the mechanic is the 10 sided black die. This is the, um, the object die. Uh, we also call it the world yesterday. It was kind of fun. So this is the die when you're not shooting somebody, you're targeting someone. You use this die to represent what you're trying to do. I'm climbing the building. That's not tap shooting somebody. So I would roll, excuse me, you would roll the black die. I would roll my action to try and climb the building. If that's higher, I fall. So that's where the die system works. So recapping really quick. Three colors here, three colors on your actions, three colors on your dice, three colors on your weapons, all ties in. And you have a great time playing with the bendy ruler. And that's the intro to the game. Sound good? All right.